Let's build a probe for this signal tracer. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, as you might have seen in the last video, um, I repaired or yeah, brought this uh, little signal tracer here back into operating condition. There's only one thing left still to do and that's building a probe. Because I don't have the original uh, probe for this signal tracer, so we need to create a new one. Um, because the goal is to not have this just in working condition, but also actually use it um, as test equipment. Uh, so I give, will give it a place on the workbench so that, that I can use it when I am working on yeah radios. Um, now, obviously without a probe, you're not going to do much. Um, so the plan is to build a new one. And I do have all the ingredients here already. So now, what kind of probe does this need to be? Um, it's not just any ordinary probe that you can simply attach to a device like this um, that won't work or that won't do a lot. Um, because these signal tracers, they typically have some circuitry inside the probe. Um, and this little circuit, um, the use of it is to uh, demodulate the, um, the audio signal, basically. So when you're probing a radio, um, and when you're probing in the RF or in the IF section, then the sound obviously is still modulated. And then the, the circuit inside the probe can uh, demodulate the audio from the signal and um, send it to the amplifier and then you can hear it through the speaker. Um, so there has to be some kind of demodulation circuit inside. And often this, with these types of devices it's located in the probe itself. The older signal tracers sometimes even have a, a complete tube inside the, the probe. This one has not, so that makes it a bit easier to build a probe uh, ourselves. Um, and what is also nice is that here on the schematic they do show you here the little circuit that needs to go inside the probe. See, it's a demodulation probe. <clears throat> So what we have here is this is the probe tip. This is the um, connector on the towards the chassis of the signal tracer. And then inside we have a very simple circuit. It's just a capacitor, uh, a diode, and a resistor. Um, the capacitor is 470 picofarad. The resistor is 470k. And the, uh, the diode is an OA. 85. Now uh, that's a germanium diode um, and I went through my stock. Um, I have a couple of, well, I have a, a small stock of germanium diodes. An OA85, I couldn't find an OA85 in my stock, but I did find an OA95. It's still new old stock, I believe. Um, and I've searched a bit online for characteristics of the OA85 and in most cross-reference guides that I found they usually list the OA95 as an equivalent or the, as a yeah, drop-in replacement. So we're going to use the OA95, that should work fine. Just to quickly show you that it's actually a germanium diode, um, let's go into diode test. Let's get the diode here. Banded side to the black lead, on the other side to the red lead, and we get a voltage drop of 0.3 volts, which is about half of that of a normal diode. Um, and if we turn it the other way around, then we should get nothing. And indeed, we get nothing. So this diode is fine. Um, then for the the capacitors, I need half a nanofarad, 470 picofarad. Don't, I don't have that in stock, but I do have two 1 nanofarad capacitors. And it's also convenient that they are quite small. So I'm going to use them in series. That should give, uh, give us about uh, half a nanofarad. So that's also fine. And then, yeah, that's just a 470k resistor. And then here we have 
an old um, oscilloscope probe that I'm not using anymore um, since a long time already because yeah I didn't like the results that it was giving it was quite noisy so we're gonna take this apart and see um, if we can fit something inside here um, and then obviously I also have a banana plug because the connector that is here on the chassis it's a really an old style connector um, it's not a PNC so uh, yeah I, I don't have anything to connect um, to this type of connector so I have a PNC um, connector to replace this one here on the on the chassis okay let's see what we can MacGyver together here uh, with this old probe okay um, first thing that we're gonna do is see here um, how we can take this apart and what can we do with this um, what is nice is that we have quite a long um, ground lead and as you notice here on the schematic we do need the ground lead attached they also they also recommend in the schematic to always use a ground connection so we do need a shield here which is attached to the chassis and we also need to if possible try to shield the circuit here um, so that's also something to pay attention to um, let's see I do think that this comes apart quite easily yeah that slides open but um, okay yeah that's just a plastic uh, plastic piece this looks like it's one piece of metal okay that slides open as well um, all right now how do we how do we get in here okay this is this cap also comes off this is the selector for yeah normally times one and times ten but it's a three position switch so i don't know what's going on here but um okay um This seems to be all in one piece, which is not that great, but we do can hopefully reuse this casing here as a as a shield. But um, I think this is pinched around here, so yeah that doesn't come off yeah I think it can come out like this yeah it's clipped in there okay uh, okay well, that's that, I guess. Oh. Oh. That's nice. Oh, wow. We have a nice shield here. Okay. So what I can do is... See, we have a PCB inside here as well. See a printed circuit board with some components. Or oh, yeah, this is the switch. Um, here we have a resistor, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I can reuse the tip here. And I can make also a sort of, yeah, from, from some sort of prototype board. I can also make a, 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 a prototype or a piece of PCB that is this thin. And then lay out the components on there. Um, and here we simply have an, yeah, simply a wire sticking through. That's quite funny, but that should work. And this, I guess, is the, yeah, I guess that's like the shield connection. Okay. That might actually work. Let me see what I can fabricate. <laughs> And then I'll get back to you. Okay, um, so this is what I came up with. 
And um, <clears throat> honestly, it took me a really long time to assemble this. Uh, much more than I anticipated. I think it uh, took me like a couple of hours or so. I had to start over three times, I think. See, this is one of the first attempts which failed. Um, and this is now, I think this should work. So what I did is I took all the hardware uh, from the original probe. I took the tip from the original probe. And then, then I took a very small piece of a um, prototype board and I cut it so small that it basically fits inside the original shell of the probe. So then we can use this shell as a shield. Um, and as you see, I have here the components uh, mounted on this board. So you have the input coming in from the tip, obviously. And then you have the two capacitors and you have the germanium diode and the the resistor so the output of the resistor is the is basically the connection which should go to the signal uh, tracer it's the signal itself and then here the connection which comes from the diode that one should be connected to ground or to chassis and should also be connected to the shield so to this part over here um, and the cable of the original probe I reused, it's a coaxial cable, so it also has a shield and that also proved quite a bit of challenge because the connection here inside was broken, so I had to remove this uh, yeah, shrink mount, um, make a, I had to cut off a bit of the cable and make the new uh, good connection here and then see this is the connection which comes from the diode and it goes through a hole here. Um, there was an original piece of wire stuck in there, so I had to remove that and it Yeah, it's basically crimped here together with this connection, but to be 100% secure I added a bit of solder here as well and Then I don't know if it is visible on camera But the wire which is from the coax cable is really really thin. I soldered that onto a bit of a bigger piece of wire and that goes to the resistor um, so it took a long time uh, to assemble this normally it should fit see if I pop that in here I just need to make sure that it fits that I'm straight in here there you go see it fits in there perfectly um, but two challenge, the biggest challenge here now will be to get this actually pinched in here inside the casing. And what I'm also going to do first is I'm going to put some heat shrink over this entire board that I don't make any contact with the, the casing, obviously. Um, because the casing is basically, or the shielding, is basically making contact with this piece and that is... Um, yeah, crimped here to the shield and we have our connection to the, the shield over there. So it's I can safely put an entire piece of heat shrink over here over this. So that's what I'm gonna do now and then um, yeah, I'll get back to you when this is assembled. Alright, I think we're done here. Um, I put the entire circuit here inside the probe. That was not <laughs> As easy as it sounds um, to get everything fitted inside and I hope I didn't break any connections or I didn't create any shorts um, I have ev isolated everything well before putting it in um, so I, I hope that uh, yeah that it stayed intact while pushing it in but we'll see <laughs> um, but I'm honestly quite happy with the result. It looks quite nice. I put a, hit, a bit of heat shrink here over on top to cover up the holes that were for the original switch. Um, and there is also a bit of metal tape underneath um, to act with as a shielding. Um, but honestly, uh, the probe looks quite okay. Um, the only thing I now have left to do is to change here this, this um, connector for the input to a uh, B and C plug. Um, let's see if that will be 
easy or it will be also as convoluted as creating something like this. So, Okay, so here we have the connector and as you see two connections, um, you have the ground here on the, that's this side and then here you have the, the signal itself. It's also a coaxial cable I guess because the shield here is attached to the ground and that one is going to the attenuator switch. So we're gonna have to get this loose. Um, I don't know where it is soldered. This one is quite obvious, but that one probably somewhere in the connector. So I um, think I'm gonna desolder this one here, the ground, and then uh, loosen the nut here. And then see um, if we can get access to somewhere where it needs to be soldered. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so it is quite easy to get it loose. You just simply need the this pin here from the front and then you can pull out the wire here uh, on the back um, and I also detached here the ground connection and then with a yeah a wrench like this you can simply uh, loosen the nut and that should get the old connector out easily There we have it. What is a bit funny is that there is an isolator ring between this and the connector for ground. Um, but on the front, it's still connected to the chassis. So, but yeah, whatever. So we have the old connector out. And I suspect that the hole now that we have here will be a bit too big for the new one. Yeah, see, it's slightly too big. So we'll, I think it'll fit, but maybe we need an extra washer. Let me see here. Well, that was actually pretty simple. I didn't even have to use a washer. Um, okay, the hole was a bit too big, but it didn't really matter. I could tighten it strong enough that it, uh, it doesn't budge. See, and here, Connecting up the yeah, new BNC connector is also, yeah, went quite well, quite easy to do. Um, yeah, very happy with this. Um, so now, well, I think the only thing that we have left to do is actually test it out and see how it performs, <laughs> if it is really working as a signal tracer. So let me grab a radio here uh, somewhere. I think I have a couple laying around and then we can see if it really works like I hope it will <laughs> Okay, so I got here the Philips um, A5X 83A tuner that I restored recently on the channel um, And I've got it plugged in and I have, uh, have it hooked up to the signal uh, generator and it's generating a signal on uh, 1 to 2 megahertz and I'm tuned to the frequency and yeah, if I turn up the volume on my amplifier, you can clearly hear it. But we're gonna turn the volume down. So this, this tuner is working perfectly fine. I'm just gonna use it to see um, if my signal tracer is working. So I have my new probe here hooked up. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start things really simple. Um, and we're just gonna check here. This is the schematic of the tuner. And we're going to check here at one of the uh, IF stages. So this tuner has uh, two IF stages, two times an EF89. So I'm just going to take this one here. Here you have the mixer oscillator. I'm going to check this one and I'm going to check on the measure on the grid and on the plate and see if we can um, detect the signal over there. So let's turn on the signal tracer. I do have the signal tracer still hooked up to the dumb bulb. Uh, you never know. And uh, the tuner nut, obviously, that one is uh, simply connected to uh, to the mains. So the tracer is still working. I'm gonna put this to quite a low um, signal. So the attenuator switch over here, um, the labeling is a bit uh, misleading. 
because it is labeled as attenuator and then you would think that a, a higher number is a higher attenuation but that's not the case um, the numbers here they are a sort of indication of the signal strength so the higher the number the lower uh, or the less attenuation you have so I'm just going to put it on quite a low uh, number just to start with um, all right let's try this out now what we're gonna do is we are going to measure first here on uh, pube B3 at pin 2 let me find out where it is okay so I found out where I uh, where the grid is of the the tube so I'm first gonna connect here the ground lead to the chassis of the tuner or radio that I'm inspecting now let's see here pin 2 Pin 2 should be over there. Nothing. Maybe, maybe my attenuation is way too high. Ah, yeah. I can hear it. Awesome. Ah, the connection here, the, the, the pin is a bit oxidized, I think. Yeah. Great! Okay, so that's on the grid. And if we measure on the plate, then we should have a much higher signal. It's pin 7. So this is the grid. I think this is pin 7. Oh, I can all I'm just near it and I can already hear the Wow. Yeah, that is Yeah, that is quite clear. Wow. Great. Ha, <laughs> that's working. Okay, uh, it seems that our signal tracer is working well. Um, now what we basically did is we measured around this stage here and we measured before and after the stage so um, it's quite normal eh, that we get a high gain here through this tube um, now there is a procedure here in the manual of the signal tracer that um, explains us how we can determine more or less the gain of the stage Okay, so how does it work? Um, I'm put the camera a bit closer because we really need to see our uh, magic eye for this procedure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure uh, before the tube on the grid and then we're gonna note down the settings that we have for the attenuator um, and the sensitivity and we're gonna remember um, the state of the magic eye. Um, so the idea is maybe to put the magic eye in a position that you can clearly remember it. So let's see. So I'm going to again go to pin 2. So here we have pin 2. And now we're gonna see to set these dials in such a way that the magic eye has a certain deflection that we can remember. So maybe let's do it like this. We're at 30. And that's completely saturated. Maybe we can go something like, like this. Maybe like just not completely closed, okay? So this is, we are now at 30, attenuator 30, sensitivity 9. Okay, let's write that down. So we have an, uh, for the grid. We have the attenuator set to 30 and the sensitivity set to 9. Okay, now um, we're gonna measure on the plate and for that, yeah, I'm gonna put the attenuator all the way up because it's gonna be a lot stronger.
obviously all the way up is to the in the other direction. Man, I'm stupid. Okay, and now we're also going to put the magic eye in a position that is just not closed, like this. And we are now at for on the plate. We measure attenuator set to one, sensitivity eight and a half, eight dot five. Okay. Now they give us a formula that we should calculate to get the uh, the gain of the stage. So it's quite easy. What we simply do is we divide the ratios between grid and plate and we multiply these values with each other. So we have 30 times 9 divided by 8.5 9 divided by 8.5 is 1.06 so yeah, it's gonna be more or less 30, right? So 1.06 times 30 is 31.76. So we have a gain of 31.76. Okay, um, I could go ahead and start measuring other things and stuff like that, but um, I'm not gonna do that. Um, you'll probably see the signal tracer popping up again in one of the one of my next upcoming videos or restorations. So um, I'm gonna disconnect everything here. Um, power down my radio. Power down the signal generator. Uh, the signal tracer. Sorry, I I'm gonna keep calling this a signal generator. Also in the next videos. So. <laughs> If you ever uh, hear me say signal generator, always think, is he talking about a signal generator or, ab or about a signal tracer? Because I'm, I'm going to make this mistake like a gazillion times. Um, anyway, I'm going to put it back into the box, uh, into its case, give it a clean, and then we should be good to go. Okay, and we're done. Um, I gave the cabinet a clean. Now, the cabinet isn't perfect. There are quite a bit of... Yeah, spots of rust, some scratches, some paint missing, some dents, but hey, I'm not gonna bother. It's not a restoration, um, it's a repair, and I really want to use this as a test equipment, and I don't think that it makes sense to look this uh, like new. Um, so technically, it's now in perfectly workable condition, and it looks slightly used <laughs> let's call it like that but hey i am happy with the result here um, and i also honestly i really like how it looks it's a really nice looking piece of piece of test equipment um yeah it look, looks really vintage and it will look nice on my workbench i'm give, gonna give it a uh yeah a prominent place on the workbench um, i'm thinking about um, mounting a a rack here somewhere against the wall so that I can put it here on a on a yeah on a rack that it doesn't take up space on the table. But I still have to think about that. For for now, it's just going to I'm gonna, just going to put it aside or put it here in the corner maybe, um, and then we'll later we'll get a nice place for this. Okay. So um, that's it for this video series. Um, it was a short reparation series. Um, if you've been watching uh, all the videos about the signal tracer, thanks a lot for watching. If you uh, enjoy um, what I'm doing on the channel, don't forget to subscribe uh, and like the video. Uh, and then next time we'll probably do a radio again. Um, not sure, we'll see. Um, so see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.